people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to yet another FNAF news video. We got a whole bunch of topics to talk about today, of course, more news regarding the upcoming FNAF movie, brand new actors, some very interesting plot details, and even possibly Markiplier making an appearance. We've also got some updates on a whole bunch of book news as well as some recap news that I asked on my community tab. Some topics you wanted me to recover that maybe you missed out on. Maybe it's been a while since we've had updates on them. So very quickly, we're gonna go through the top requested topics and without further ado, Let's not waste any more time. If you're brand new, consider tickling the sub button. Let's hop into it. First up, a lot of people are curious about the current state of the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative. Well, with the five games in total, it's been a bit quiet, but there's still updates going on with every single series. First up, we've got T-Jock, the Ignited Collection. We've actually gotten a few updates, especially pretty recently from Nixon himself, videos I've already covered on this channel. Same thing with Five Nights at Candy's 4 in the ports of the original FNAC trilogy, as well as the brand new spin-off game FNAC Fur. So if you want more details on those two topics as well as FNAF Plus because I've also made my fair share of FNAF Plus update videos recently. They'll all be linked down below if you want more info on those. I've also got a huge news video coming out very very soon on Pop Goes Evergreen. Kane does an amazing job compiling news on the Pop Goes series over on Game Joel. I'll leave that link down below too. We've been missing out on quite a few of those updates so very very soon hopefully at the start of next week or during this weekend I'll have a huge video talking about all those weekly updates. Finally we've got One Night at Flumpty's which is a pretty complete series. The only thing we're missing right now is the One Night at Flumpty's 3 egg collection for consoles. It's been in development for a very long time, could in fact possibly be done. However, we haven't seen a release of it yet, most likely because of the drama regarding the One Night at Flumpty's creator. Personally though, I do hope it comes out some point in the future. We do know Flumpty's is still technically in the fanverse because, well, it's still got its ports up on mobile, so not sure why it's not releasing. Another topic people wanted me to cover was FNAF AR, and Unfortunately, there's no updates I can provide. It has been dead silence over in the FNAF AR community, especially with Illumix. We've not had an update on the game since December of 2021 when they added Fun Time Freddy. And I think since then, they've just been recycling their old content doing Blast from the Past updates, but there's been no content since then. And that was well over a year ago. So as much as I'd like to give the fans of FNAF AR some hope for the future, I don't think we're going to see any more updates on the game in the foreseeable future. Something else we've not been getting a whole lot of updates on is the Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Delivery Service. This was announced in June of last year with a collaboration with Virtual Dining Concepts, and it was, as it sounds, a pizza delivery service uh, through the means of a ghost kitchen. So people could technically order pizza from Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, but there wouldn't actually be a establishment they could go into and order from. It was using already existing restaurants to make the food and then deliver it out through the means of the pizza delivery service. Hopefully that makes sense. It all seemed pretty good. There was a lot of hype for it. I believe their, their official Twitter account got a whole bunch of interactions with their announcement tweet. But since then, any links to the actual site for Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Delivery Service just takes you back to the homepage for VDC. The Twitter account has been inactive since June of 2022, so unfortunately, seems like yet another FNAF project that's not going to see the light of day anymore. Lastly, there was a few people asking for a recap of the Tales from the Pizzaplex book series. I do have a few videos that I want to do covering some of the topics involved in the recent Tales books because they're pretty interesting and may even lead to some game lore we're going to see down the road. I've also got a video talking about everything releasing for FNAF in 2023, so hopefully those couple of videos will satisfy your need for news on the Tales from the Pizzaplex series. But with that, let us do a clean segue from recap news to brand new news. Because a couple of days ago, the fifth Tales from the Pizzaplex book, The Bobby Dot's Conclusion, officially released. Also on the same day that Bobby Dot's Conclusion released, we got the second collection for the Fazbear Frights graphic novel. So these two books are out right now. If you want to go pick them up, feel free to. As a little bit of bonus news on the back cover of the Bobby Dot's Conclusion, you can actually see the official designs for the Generation 2 Bobby Dots, featuring Olive, Gemini, and Rose in all of their Bobby Dot's glory. Sticking with the theme of Tales from the Pizzaplex, we got a couple previews for the sixth entry, Nexi, with one of the previews officially revealing the stories included within the book. You've got Nexi, Drowning, and The Mimic. If you've been keeping up with your Tales books, you'll know that The Mimic 
is a pretty interesting character and seems like they'll be getting a whole story dedicated to them in the sixth book. Moving on, we've also got Tales from the Pizzaplex number seven, Tiger Rock, updating their cover slightly. Nothing too major, seems like a couple lighting and saturation changes on the guitar and the eyes in the background. This book releases on July 4th, 2023, so once again, whole bunch of Tales books coming out this year. Next up, let's move on to the most anticipated book for the series, though. Step aside, Tales from the Pizzaplex, we've got the official FNAF cookbook coming out in September. Since we last talked about the book, we've got a brand new recipe for Freddy Fazbear's Pepperoni Express. As you can see, a delicious looking pizza right there. Inspired by our main man Freddy, this book is coming along great. Also revealed today were the first couple of pages featured in the book. It seems like mostly just getting prepared for making your meals. As you can see, get ready for Freddy's food with a whole bunch of recipes on the side. For some reason, a tour of the Mega Pizza Plex. Not entirely sure why this is featured, but there you go. And finally, we've got Pizza Plex Kitchen Safety. Obviously, make sure you're careful when making all of these recipes. Like I said earlier, the book comes out in September on the 5th, so if you're interested in making your own Freddy's Pizza, definitely don't miss out on this. And finally, for this FNAF news video, it just cannot be a news video nowadays without talking about some form of news regarding the upcoming FNAF movie. We're going to be getting into a little bit of spoiler territory, nothing too big, just some brand new characters as well as some maybe plot details with this new one we're going to be talking about, because a casting call was put up recently by Central Casting for a young Vanessa role. Now, the actress you see in the bottom for the casting isn't actually confirmed to be the actress playing young Vanessa. Most likely, they're just used as a reference picture. But what's very interesting about this news is that this practically confirms we're going to be getting some flashbacks in the movie. We were speculating this for a very long time, but now, come on, it's practically confirmed. Why else would they need a young Vanessa? We do know that actress Elizabeth Lale has been cast as adult Vanessa, who, if this is the same Vanessa we see in Security Breach, is no longer a security guard at the Pizzaplex and, a and is now, in this movie at least, a cop. Based off the exclusive description for Vanessa and a few other characters we got from Geek Vibes Nation, popular theory right now is that when Vanessa was young, she actually saw William Afton, aka Matthew Lillard himself. Hey, who saw Scream 6 this week? Beautiful film. Anyways, the popular theory is that Vanessa saw William killing the kids when she was young, and now that she's grown up, has taken the role of a police officer, knows about what's going on with William, the tragic past of Freddy's, and is trying to help Mike out on his job. At least that's what people are thinking right now. Moving on to other brand new castings, we've got Bailey Winston cast as Kim. No other references for what this character is going to be. People, of course, have been throwing out their theories, though. Possibly she's just a friend of Mike. Maybe she's a mom of a kid who goes missing. But I'd love to know what are your thoughts on Bailey Winston's character? Who do you you think Kim is going to be? How do you think she's going to be involved with the story? And lastly, for new roles, we've got Tadise Young cast as Dr. Lillian. And just like Kim, we're not entirely sure who this Dr. Lillian is, what role she's going to be playing in the film. A lot of people are thinking she's actually going to be a therapist to help kind of coach Mike through his tragic past, which once again, based on his leaked character description, we do know he's dealing with some tragic guilt. Uh, but yeah, once again, love to know what are your thoughts and theories on Dr. Lillian? How do you think she's going to play into the film. And now we move on to probably the main reason you clicked on this video. Markiplier. Because <laughs> recently, Mark had an interview with Variety because he signed an exclusive uh, Spotify deal for his podcast. And in that interview, they actually asked him, hey, are you going to be in the FNAF movie? To which Mark responded with, everyone wants to know. There was a lot of confusion. Yeah, I can't say anything particular about that. There was a lot of scheduling conflict, and I can't say anything. Now, there's a few ways to take this, and quite frankly, I don't have the correct answer. There's been a lot of people assuming, well, he didn't just outright say no, therefore he's in the movie. Some other people speculating he probably signed an NDA or some other contract that he can't explicitly say, yeah, I'm in the movie, it's gonna be cool. But also a lot of people have been pointing to there was a lot of scheduling conflict in his quote, confirming maybe they wanted him in the movie, but things just didn't work out, because if you didn't know, Mark's actually filming his own movie right now, which is pretty insane. Which, by the way, I should clarify, his movie's not the FNAF movie. He's not making the FNAF movie. He's doing his own thing. But quite frankly, it's going to be very interesting to see. Most likely, if he is in the movie, it'll be a quick cameo. Maybe he's not in the first movie, but he's got a cameo in the in the second movie. I'm not entirely sure. But it's going to be interesting. I know a lot of people are like, I don't want YouTubers in my movie. It'll take me out of the experience. Frankly, I'm fine with it, as long as it's not like right in your face, like shoving it in your face. Like, look, this is the guy you know. Plus, personally, I think Mark deserves it. He proves he's a pretty good actor, and he's pretty important to FNAF history. I don't see why he shouldn't have at least a cameo in the movie. It'll just be neat. But as always, 
What do you think? Do you think Mork's in the movie and he's just trying to hide it? Do you think he's not in the movie? Do you want him in the movie or not? I'd love to know what are your thoughts in the comments down below. And that's actually going to do it for this FNAF news video. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.